Welcome to Berconi Watch's channel. Colors all around me. I don't know. Colors, especially primary colors. They just awaken some kind of excitement inside of me. Appreciation for aesthetics and beauty. But let's not rush things. Today's presentation is truly an homage to the artist involvement in design and development of timepieces. I really love and appreciate art. Art is everywhere around us. Art is a better part of our soul. And that appreciation for art, such as written word or music or painting, is probably what makes us appreciate these timepieces, which are, in a way, artistic expression of movement in time. I don't think you can be truly a watch enthusiast and not have affinity, at least, for art. So, why don't we jump into Bear Clooney Watch's studio and take a closer look at this watch that just speaks to me in a very artistic way. And here we are at Bear Clooney Watch's studio celebrating art, celebrating the artistic expression, celebrating probably my two favorite artists. On one side, there is Piet Mondrian and my only uh, unique true timepiece in my collection from the great Piet Mondrian and my only timepiece from a wonderful Alan Silberstein, Alan Silberstein Bolido. And I find connection between these two artists and between this, this watch and this painting. Besides the prime colors, I find that they both give me very unique expression and joy. I find that they uh, represent unique stamp of the artist who wanted to give us something from his soul in their artistic expressions. Well, today we are presenting Alan Silberstein Bolido. Who is Alan Silberstein? You see, this is the fellow right here. And these are some of his artistic expressions in watches, which I just love, I admire. Even my favorite artist, Piet Mondrian, I tie him in into my hobby of watches. Here are the two watches, which are great representation of Piet Mondrian. Isn't that gorgeous? And this one, the other one is from the, uh, one of my favorite places in New York, uh, Museum of Modern Arts. I just think that these pieces speak to me and I enjoy their artistic uh, vision of these two people. But going back to, to Alan Silberstein, he's an architect and designer who started his brand in 1990s by the way, the brand ended. Uh, they don't produce watches any longer, which I think just makes these pieces more, more precious, more rare. So in 1990s, and you can see there is, there is 1990s in this. You, you can feel the, the decade in this watch. He's unique by its colorful designs. You can see in other examples. He plays with the prime colors. He's kind of inspired by the German Bauhaus movement. He is uh, obviously a watchmaker, but architect as well. He is working from Beskenon on the border of France and Sweden, and has a very unique take on the concept of building timepieces, which is obvious. Uh, by the way, he's a Paris-born artist, and he originally flexed his creativity as an architect. So Silberstein applied his conceptual foresight to build, uh, you can call them posh pieces that create the entirely new plane of luxury. Insisting on making a product that will eventually form relationship with the owner. And this is one thing that's very unique to Silberstein. You see, he believes 
not in a form of expressionism marketing, but in a form of creating relationship and dependency in certain way of the owner of his timepiece who will fall in love with this expression to a point that they will want to have another timepiece created by him in a similar fashion, in a similar artistic expression. You know, he is an artist, but he follows strictly the three rules uh, that are basically insisting on the fact that innovation, quality, and service are predominant factors in achieving the proper relationship with the customer. Silberstein equates the actions and duties of a watchmaker to that of any other artist. He compares himself to a painter, just like Piet Mondrian, right? Believing that if a person is to purchase, as I said, someone's painting, or in this case, a watch, they will likely purchase another because they will become a fan of the artwork of that creator, of that artist, of that designer. And you know what? I think he was right. Also, Silberstein believes that he is creating a timepiece that is more than a display case for minutes and hours. Silberstein believed that each piece is a private measurement of our precious time on earth, some, something that is sanctified and most importantly, something that is very personal, something that allows us to build a great personal relationship between us and the timepiece. He's a genuine artist and he believes the purpose of the owning and wearing a watch is not simply to accessorize, that, but to wear a piece of art that allows us to quantify our most intimate relationship with the time on a very private level, while, while we simultaneously share this with the rest of the world. It is our connection between our personal time and world that surrounds us. You know, I agree with his comment that watches, watches are not normal objects. They are very lonely objects measuring our most personal thing, which is our intimate time. That's what Silberstein says. We have the instruments to measure time. In fact, we don't need to have a watch. Our laptop, our mobile phone, so many objects around us, they give us time. So why adding another one on our wrist? And this makes me want to put this watch on the wrist. I want to have this, his watch on my wrist. I want that personal connection. Why adding this on my wrist? I think people are looking more or less unconsciously to have something very unique while wearing what? My own time. This is my own time. This is my own timepiece. This uniqueness is my guiding part for my creations. That's what Silberstein says. And isn't he right? Can't we watch geeks, enthusiasts, be the ones that best understand what he meant by it? His French flair brought a little fun to the world of Swiss watchmaking, and I appreciate him for that tremendously. I'm very thankful to him for it. And we can see this in this beautiful Bolido. Alan Silberstein Bolido, automatic, beautiful, stainless steel with date and power reserve. Case is 32 with 45 millimeter, Polish stainless steel, two body tank with white animal triangle crown and screw down exhibition back. Let me show you exhibition back. Moment is nicely, very nicely decorated. It's just a genuinely artistic watch. Everything about this watch is about beauty, about artistic expression. Dial is 
matte dark black with applied stainless baton markers. Power Reserve is such a fun thing. I love Power Reserve. This is my second watch with the Power Reserve. Look at how Power Reserve moves as we're winding this watch and adding energy to it from our personal energy. We're making connection with this watch. We're making connection with this personal timepiece. We're doing what Alan Silberstein wanted us to do. The moment is a Silberstein caliber 1994, which is the highly modified ETA 2892-82 automatic 21 joules, pierced and machine turned gold rotor, 42 hour power reserve, quick set date and hawking seconds function, nickel finish, Swiss lever. Band is quite beautiful. Polish stainless steel, 13 links with deployment clasp. It has a signed crystal. Do you see? Do you see Alan Silberstein on its crystal here? I'm gonna try to make it very visible for you. His signature. And this watch truly carries out his vision. He took courage in a market laden with Rolexes and other typically opulent watches. He wanted to add some fun and quirky quality and Silberstein watches are incredibly distinct in its market. They're bearing similarity to virtually no other luxury watch brand. They're genuinely unique expression of the artist. And I appreciate him for it. I appreciate for the joy he brought to our watch world. All the respect to the artists all around the world for what they do to make our world just a little bit nicer. Let's go back to Bear Colony's Cave. And we are back at Bear Colony's Cave. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Art is extremely important to me and I hope you feel the same. If you like this video, please don't forget to click on like. If you did not subscribe, please do so and join me on this horological journey. At the end, as usually, all the best to all of you.